Okay, so we're back to the only game where you get to play the only lawyer who helps overpopulation by allowing all of the murderers to go free so they can continue to slay countless amounts of people. It's episode. Also, everyone's probably gonna be naked or dying. More naked dying Florida people, damn it. So in this episode, apparently you're a lawyer who is supposed to send women who are murderers to prison. That's not gonna happen. I wanna find as many people innocent as I can so I can cause as many deaths as humanly possible by the end of the episode. We're not just Florida man, we graduated college. Actually, that that's looking too far. We graduated sixth grade. We're Florida. Matlock. Oh god, I need a surname of Canada. Jesus, look at this preppy bastard. It's like he hasn't been to prison one day in his life. I just noticed you can have white eyes. He's gone blind from Bud Light poisoning. Yikes. I never knew there were so many colors for Florida man's lips. That's fine. They're a little red from drinking the blood of the innocent. Half of the time his mouth disappears anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Let's ruin some lives. In the criminal justice system, Murders committed by crazy hot women are considered especially heinous. Things are starting off with a bang. I'm gonna expect at least 10 people dead and or impregnated by the end. I like how everywhere else in the world you're a murderer, but in episode, you're just simply misunderstood. And thus our first day of defending people who totally don't deserve it begins. Who looks the guiltiest? We'll start from left to right. I like how her crime is murder and her weapon is car. Like any car or a specific one? I guess we'll find out when we ask her. I appreciate that you can dress Florida man up, but no matter what, he always looks like he just got out of a fight with a polar bear. That's right, Roxy. I'm here to get you back on the street so you can murder more people. My name is Florida Matlock of Canada. Why don't you tell me more about your case? I was arrested for a hit and run, but I didn't do it. This is a deep defense you've got going here, Roxy. Okay, I technically did. Okay, well, that fell apart quickly. As your lawyer, I have to inform you. Please don't tell me shit that will make us lose. But only because someone else made me do it. Was it the voice? is. It was the voices, wasn't it? If you help me, I promise I will pay you back for your efforts. I see where this is going. It's not quite a legally binding contract, but you have yourself a deal. Can you explain how someone else made you do it? Oh, I can't wait for this. They said if I didn't steal a really expensive car and start running people over on the street, it's always bad when the start of the story has an ellipsis. They'd kill my whole family. Sounds fake, but okay. So you were under duress. Oh my God, that's awful. Sounds fake. I guess this is what we'll explain to the judge. You seem like a nice woman. I'm sure they'll understand. You can see the look on her face. She's like, I'm going back to prison, aren't I? It's episode. You'll be fine. Welcome to the people's court where justice doesn't happen unless someone gets murdered. Not guilty. Your honor. My client was under duress when she committed the crime. My client is sorry. My client is too hot to be in prison. I wouldn't be doing my job as a lawyer if I didn't intentionally try and screw my client over with this. Yep, that's our argument. My client is clearly too hot to be in prison. She'd be a sitting duck. Well, you're right about that. Oh my God, she's gonna buy it. This is why you always make sure that if you go to court, you're at the end of the docket because clearly this judge just wants to go home. She is fine, but she did still commit a crime, so I have to enforce the law and punish her. Oh, sh <laughs> sorry, Roxy, I tried. The jails are quite overcrowded. I believe sentencing her to 400 hours of community service is a fair trade. It didn't really go into how many people she killed. Maybe it's four. It's a, clear, it's a nice, easy 100 hours per life in this courtroom. You're free to go. I'm amazing at my job. Well, Roxy, we did it. I really don't know how. You saved me from a prison sentence. I was just doing my job. That's right, Roxy. This is what a mountain of student loans has given me. A beat up face, a low amount of intelligence to apply to my trade and alcoholism. So I just asked her now that she's free if she needs a lift and she goes, I don't know, I have no family. You lying whore. And after getting arrested, I have no car either. I have nowhere to go. Never mind, Roxy totally had somewhere to go. I swear I don't normally do things like that. Let's leave the lying to Roxy. It's okay, it happens to a lot of men. You don't need to be in, wait a minute. I was afraid of hooking up with a client. I have decided we have to make sure that all of these girls go free so that I can find out what happens when you get the ending with all of the murderers not going to prison. Will you be all right here on your own? She's going to end up killing people while I'm gone, isn't she? That depends. Do you have a car? Oh, Christ. What a weird question. I have two in the garage downstairs. I should be fine then. This is Willow Green. She's 26. Her crime is murder. Her weapon was a baseball bat. God, it's the Joe Pesci of hot girls. Whatever, let's do this. Hello, Willow Pesci. I am your lawyer. 
My name is Florida Matlock of Canada. Tell me why you killed someone with a baseball bat. It was in self-defense. If you help me with my trial, I'll be sure to pay you back. Okay, I can already tell where this is ending up at. With sex? No, of course not. I just had to make sure. This is actually a giant U-turn. That is not where I thought this conversation would go. Oh, not the sex part, with her denying the sex part. This man had been following me and attacked me when I was alone. I like how I'm a lawyer that doesn't ask any of the hard questions. Like, why were you walking alone with a baseball bat? I didn't mean to kill him. I just didn't want to die. Willow Green, how do you plea? What does it matter? With enthusiasm? Great, I've got one of those clients. This was self-defense, Your Honor. Lots of people walk around New Jersey with baseball bats waiting for someone to tap them on the shoulder so they can beat them to death. Interesting. Do you have proof it was self-defense? You could ask the man who attacked me. I'll bet he could confirm he was trying to kill me first. This girl has the right idea when it comes to committing a crime. Don't leave the potential witness alive. The man who allegedly attacked you is dead. So I will ask again, do you have any proof? I like how we totally didn't have any proof and this judge is like, ah, eh, based on the reports, I have no reason to believe that Willow Green is a danger to society. We have to be in Jersey. She did indeed kill the victim with a baseball bat. What are you going with 500 hours of community service this time? Well, 500 hours, I called it. Does that mean I'm not going to jail? Yes, you're free to go home, but I'm homeless. I was counting on some jail time so I could be given free meals and a comfortable bed. I'm not gonna lie, when I started my job as a lawyer, I never thought I would screw someone over by not sending them to prison. Prison isn't meant to be a hotel. The beds aren't comfortable in jail. Florida man knows. Why didn't you tell me this before you pleaded innocent? I pleaded enthusiastically. God damn it, she's right. We could have argued that you were a threat to society. I could have told the judge that you're likely to be a repeat offender. Oh, I'm absolutely sure she's going to offend repeatedly. It's your fault I'm homeless. You're the reason I have nowhere safe to sleep tonight, but Willow, you do. I like that we're back home and we're about to talk to the other girl that's here. And it's what was her name again? The answers are Rosie, Roxy, or Rumpelstiltskin. I have to go with the obvious answer here. And she comes when called. She's like, my name is Roxy. I was close. They both have an R in it. What are you wearing? Clothes. Where did you get these clothes? What money did you use to buy these clothes? I liked it better when you were in your underwear. This is the obvious answer, but I kind of want her to admit that she probably murdered someone for these clothes. You pulled a Terminator, didn't you, Roxy? From the clothes shop. Amazing, my murderous girlfriend acts like she's five. How did you get to the shop? You don't have a car, I borrowed yours. You didn't expect me to wear that fugly orange jumpsuit forever, did you? Does my car now have human blood on it? I love how Florida Matlock is like, I expected you to stay in your underwear all day. I didn't even have to choose this option. I have some news that affects you. I'm not going to jail again, am I? I don't know, did you kill someone while I was gone? Why would you think that? No reason. We have another house guest. Meet Willow. If I find out you're sleeping with someone else, I'll kill you and the witch you're cheated on me with. Technically, that would be two more for this episode's death count, so I'm okay with that. Is that clear, new girl? I appreciate that everyone inside of my house gets along so well. So we're watching TV. It's a breaking news story. A woman has fled from the scene after her car collided into oncoming traffic. The woman was allegedly driving on the wrong side of the road before she hit another vehicle and caused a seven car pileup. Four people died at the scene, Jesus Christ. Oh boy. <laughs> Weird, that car looks exactly Exactly like one of mine. Florida Matlock subscribes to the idea of if I don't look directly at the problem, it's probably not there. So we just got done watching a movie and the options here are go to bed alone, invite Willow to join you, make Willow sleep on the couch and carry Roxy to bed. For anyone who's not up to speed with how episode works, let me go ahead and describe what these are. Get Willow killed by Roxy, get both of us killed, or everyone probably lives. Going for the twofer. I like how she brings up a really good point. She did say she would kill us both. She was just joking. I don't think she was joking, I think. I'm still alive, this is a good thing. What the hell was she wearing? Is that a leopard skin top? Can you maybe try and sneak out of this room without Roxy noticing, just in case she wasn't joking? Later, our last girl killed someone with a gun. Might as well have the trio topped off. I didn't really do it. I have a sister and I'm pretty sure she was the killer. She's always been jealous of me and wanted to get me out of the picture so she could take over the family business. I'm somewhat hesitant to ask about what the family business is. What's the family business? We're the mafia. I may end up getting both the other girls killed. I know what you're thinking, but trust me, it's just a stereotype. If your twin sister is still a murderous bitch, it, she's kind of fitting this mafia stereotype. My client was framed. Her sister tried to impersonate her. She's part of the mafia. 
Jealousy is a disease. In this court, you're better off just rolling a die and letting that being your defense. Let's go with jealousy. Relevance. It was my opening statement. Her sister is the real criminal here. My client is being framed. And where is her sister? Your Honor, I really don't know. She's one of the people that don't live in my penthouse right now. She's probably out murdering someone else. She does that type of thing, you know. You're both making a mockery of my court. She's still innocent though, right? I've come to my decision. You can't do that. I barely presented my case. I can't see how sending this hot young woman to jail would benefit anyone, what the hell? I think the twist is this isn't even the judge. It's just like some janitor that put on the judge's gown and now she's sitting in the judge's box. I've looked into her file and she's a model citizen. Who are we putting this lady up against? Case dismissed. Now you understand why I make the big bucks. I said I would repay you, so here I am. I can't accept your body as payment. I wasn't talking about my body. What the hell were you talking about? And since when does he not accept bodies for payment? I'm a chef. Oh, wait. What is it you cook? I just say that because I've been playing this game for a little while and human meat has been one of the ingredients. I'm going to move in with you and make sure you have a home cooked meal every night. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Hey girls. Hi darling. What the hell? Did you guys go to the animal kingdom and slay a zebra? I guarantee these two were out murdering someone. How was your day at work? Why does it always look like I'm drunk? This place looks really clean. Thank you. Being your cleaner is how I have decided to pay you back for saving me from prison. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of hoping that you would get killed by Roxy, but this is fine too. I have some news. The woman I defended today will be moving in with us. She's gonna be our live-in chef. Please say hello to- Oh God, they know each other. I'm so happy to see you both again. You know them? Sure do, when we're bored, we murder people together. Roxy was my cellmate, and after she left, Willow took her place. I'm glad you're all friends. I think I'll start making dinner. Reporting live from the mall where just two hours ago, there was a horrendous crime committed. Two women raced through here on a motorcycle. The passenger was swinging a baseball bat at shoppers. Several people have been taken to the hospital with broken knees. Hold on, our mafia girl just got into the house. Okay, you can't be doing the knee breaking thing without her. Wow, that was crazy. Good thing it wasn't the mall you both went to today. Right? So we're having our little conversation and Valeria comes in and she's like, seriously? These girls both told me they had plans to commit many more murders when they got out of jail. Good. I guess they've just joined forces. It's like the Batman and Robin of the hot murderous girl crew. Ladies, is this true? The jig is up. Thanks a lot. So you're both really murderers. Of course they are. There's no one in this game who isn't. It's not like you're so innocent. You're the mafia queen. Hey, wait a second. Look, I don't even have a sister. I never even got to try your cooking. So I guess you're gonna have us arrested, right? Let's look at the pros and cons. One can cook, one can clean, and Roxy can be Roxy. The cons are the three criminals are criminals. I'm calling the cops. I won't report you, but you need to get out of my house or you can keep living here. Just try and behave. I like how since yesterday, like 30 people are dead and he's like, now behave. Can you only kill people on the weekends? But try to behave. I don't want to have to defend any of you in court again. Oh, everyone's okay with this. I'm outside of a popular New York cafe where just earlier today, a crime was committed. It's just like the next day or just that night. Two women came in armed with a baseball bat and a gun. The pair robbed the cafe and then took three iced coffees to go. Starbucks, no! Before jumping into the getaway car, which was being driven by an accomplice. The car broke down and the girls were caught and arrested. This is a fantastic cycle. If they just keep going to court and I keep representing them, they'll put all my kids through college. What happens if you would have called the cops on them? Hold on, I gotta find out real quick. So I'm back in court and I decided to defend Willow in a different way and we got her off. And she goes, do I have to kill another man just so I can have a place to sleep tonight? Don't do that. So I did things slightly out of order this time and now I have to remember Willow's name and the choices are Winona, Willow, or Wonder Woman. How can I say no? So there's another news broadcast here. In this breaking news, a woman has fled the scene after she tormented a children's baseball team. The woman allegedly brought her own baseball bat to the game and chased down the children to beat them. Where does this girl keep finding baseball bats at? We're in court and um, the judge is asking Roxy 
to describe what the murderer told her to do when he forced her to uh, kill everyone with the car. And Roxy says, he told me to pretend I was a bowling ball and everyone in the mall were the pins. Did you get a strike, Roxy? I was so scared. So we're at the part where I'm probably going to get shot in the face a hundred times. And I'm like, Roxy, you're a criminal as well? And she's like, yeah, I steal cars and crash them into people for fun. This is a fantastic example of what an episode's idea of fun is. I am so disappointed. God, it's like they got a C minus on a biology test. I'm going to call the cops now. Never mind. I'm sorry. I'm not calling the cops anymore. I'm outside the Florida Matlock of Canada's apartment where he was found dead last night. I wasn't happy if I couldn't get that last kill in there. God, I didn't just get shot, I got godfathered as well. Oh, and one of my cars is missing. In New York City, you were a dedicated defense lawyer who believed these women were simply misunderstood. It seems you were wrong, and now I'm dead. Well, I think we managed to kill the maximum amount of people that you possibly can in this episode. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed this episode of Episode. Till next time, stay foxy and much love.